Thank you for joining us for another episode of Exposing Scientology, where we reveal what really goes on inside this business masquerading as a church. Hi, everyone. We're hey. back. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hello, hello. Doing a live at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, so some of our foreign people are able to join us because we always get a lot of uh, people going, oh, my God, it's so late for us. We can't make it. So hopefully they will be able to join us. I assume that we have a bunch of people already uh, in the comments. Oh, yeah, finally an hour when we are awake in Europe. <laughs> Yay. That's nice. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I fear that the reason that we weren't able to do any lives together was my fault because I have been traveling, <clears throat> excuse me, for the last few weeks all over the United States and I am unwilling to bring my recording setup with me <laughs> all over the country. So uh, we just had to wait till I got back. Yes, we did. But we're glad you're back. We're glad you're back for the holidays. Yay. Thank you. Me yes. especially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Okay, well, this, the um, description of this uh, live broadcast was somewhat cryptic. And um, it was sort of a sneaky way of getting people to come and watch to find out what's going on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> mystery sandwich in the house. <laughs> exactly, mystery sandwich. <laughs> um, I think that maybe we should give it a couple of minutes before we do the big reveal. Sure. Um, what do you think, guys? Yeah. That's great. And hey, we... sh shout out to Phil Jones. I saw he's in the chat. Thanks for yeah. being here, Phil. Merry Phil Christmas. and Willie are here in yeah. Florida. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yes. that's right. I remember you saying that now. Yeah. They're, they're here and they're uh, coming to our New Year's party. Yay. Nice. That's good. We'll have a nice time. Yes, and we have um, apostate Alex is here. Oh, good. And, um, we've got um, hi, Mark. Alex. I'm glad. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes, and we've got <laughs> Ma Mark Fisher here, and uh, Cassie Isaac is here. Oh, and the one and only Purple Groovy is here. <laughs> Purple Groovy, <laughs> Love Yay. Food Kitchen. We've got a lot of frequent flyers in here tonight. Michelle yes. Carpenter. Nice. Um, we we appreciate all you guys coming. And if you're in the if you're in the uh, watching the video right now, and you can uh, get into the chat, let us know where you're coming from today. We always love seeing where people are tuning in from um, around the world. Uh, we've got Nadine from South Africa. Um, we've got all kinds of people. There's a bunch of people. Hello from Australia. Um, so Las Vegas, Chile, Chile. I saw, London. I saw someone from Northern Ireland, Australia, nice. yeah. Canada, Belgium. Yay. People from yeah. all over. Apparently, Even from Cleveland, <clears throat> Carrie, thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Apparently you I need to got get internet myself there now. Yeah, That's apparently awesome. I need to get myself a checkered shirt to match you fine gentlemen. Well, I this is my most Christmassy flavored shirt that I could find, so um, that's why. Oh, that's what that's about. It's you I know, get it. Kind of Christmas colors, and at least of my wardrobe, that's what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have a shirt that I was going to wear that's very similar to Mike's, and I'm glad I didn't wear that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't too. Mike was... one time wore a shirt on the. Um, on a stream or maybe when we were at his house or something. And I was like, did I leave my shirt at Mike's house when the last time we were there? Cause I have that same exact shirt yeah. and uh, no, it was his own shirt. He just bought the same one, which is, it's, it's always possible. Nice. I have my Christmas mug today. Oh, nice. I have my um, Grayson artwork mug from when oh, he did? was, uh, when he was oh, a little tyke. Yep. It was his little hand. I have some of those from Jack. Yep. Little mugs. Should we okay. Show, yeah, I was going to say, should we show the uh, the cover, or do you want to get right? Yeah, into let, it let I, I'm actually going to show the actual thing here, and then we'll go into some detail. Perfect. So, uh, available now on new a newsstand near you is uh, a special edition of National Geographic. Whoop! Where there we go. It's called Secret Societies, True Tales of Covert Cults 
and organizations and their leaders. And lo and behold, featured in this special edition of National Geographic is Scientology. Um, they have it broken down into three eras, and the modern era has, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight organizations included within it. They are <laughs> the Italian Mafia, Skull and Bones, which is the secret society at Princeton, Prin Princeton, the Chinese Triads, Opus wow. Dei, the Priory of Sion, the Red Brigades and Red Army Faction, Scientology, and the Knights of Malta. Wow. That's okay, a club then. right there to be on that the list of. That is a club. <laughs> <laughs> it's a club not to be a part of. <laughs> and um, it, the, like most National Geographic articles, this is not text heavy. Um, it's a four-page spread about Scientology. And, um, Mark, if you want to pull up the first page, we can just cover some of the stuff. Well, that's the cover. Covert cults. Not just any cult. Covert right. cults. I love that. So it says in the subhead of this, uh, the Scientology movement is one of the most controversial religious organizations in modern history. The veil of secrecy around Scientology's teachings has reinforced speculation about its inner workings. Accused of fraud, illegal practice of medicine, harassment of journalists, child trafficking, and reprisals against members who step out of line, it remains popular among Hollywood actors. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, that that's not a very... Um, I mean, all the people in OSA are taking inches of N theta media for this article. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it goes on to say, um, Hubbard's claims were rejected by some in the medical establishment as pseudoscience in 1951. His foundation was sued by the New Jersey Board of Medical Examiners for purporting to teach medicine without a license. The suit led to the foundation's bankruptcy while Hubbard lost the rights to the Dianetics trademark. In 1953, Hubbard decided to change his idea from a science into a religion, explaining that, quote, Dianetics is a science which applies to man while Scientology is a religion. It, it then it goes on as the Church of Scientology, the new religion grew rapidly throughout the United States and the world. In 1993, after an ugly, protracted battle with the IRS, during which L. Ron Hubbard devised Scientology's own Snow White Intelligence Agency, it was granted a tax exemption in the United States as the Church. The Church has been ruled a fraud in France and is classified as a cult in Germany. Wow. Okay. To and, the next and this little thing about it can read your mind, it talks about the e-meter um, as a lie detector. On yeah, to nice. the next page here, Mark. Okay. So several former Scientology members have spoken out, alleging abuses by the church. Former member Leah Remini's show, Scientology and the Aftermath, hosts former high-ranking members who reveal a culture of violence and schemes to fleece members out of their money. Most recently, church leader David Miscavige disappeared on the heels of a federal child trafficking lawsuit. Scientology membership is plumbing, plummeting worldwide, as paradoxically, the church keeps getting richer. Mm -hmm. On its website, Scientology beckons visitors with the most outrageous of invitations. See how you can live again. Wow. Okay. I, I never thought in my lifetime I would see the day where uh, National Geographic was taking shots at Scientology. 
-hmm. not even taking shots, that's the wrong word, was covering the, the terrible activities of Scientology yeah. and doing so with such bold language. I mean, usually you see articles in the media where they're um, like, it's alleged that, and some people say, and this one is just pretty blunt. You know, mm -hmm. membership is plummeting. It's a uh, uh, fraud and, and, you know, all of what I just read is in, in, in the context of this article, there is maybe a half a paragraph which says anything positive. Right. And the only positive thing it says is John Travolta and Tom Cruise are members. And that's it. Yeah. All of the rest of it is Hubbard's fraud and Scientology, uh, the, the claims about all of these things that really do happen in Scientology. And this must be... I don't know how many people have seen this yet, which is why we kept it sort of a, a bit of a secret, because this is not a regular edition. For those of you who get a subscribe to National Geographic, it's not a regular edition. It's a special edition. I don't know what they, I don't know what they call this exactly, but it's, um, it's like, you know, People Magazine does this and Time Magazine does it now where they put out a special edition about the royal family or a special edition about, you know, Donald Trump or something. And this one happens to be about secret societies and covert cults. <laughs> right. And Scientology managed to, <clears throat> to make the grade to fit. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, go get a copy. You pro this is probably something you could pick up on the newsstand, or you could even I've seen them at the some supermarkets have these on the, uh, at the yeah checkout at the aisle. checkout line. Yeah, I know. I just don't know where. I don't know if you can order it online. I actually should have looked that up beforehand. I'll look after we're done, and if there is a way to look up where to, we'll put it in the description. Yeah, we'll put it in the description. So, this was a a wonderful. Um, holiday gift to Scientology. Yeah. A Christmas present. By the way, I, I noticed someone said, I said Princeton and the skull and bones is Yale. I knew oh, it was Yale. I just was confused. Anyway. Um, nice. There's also, I just want to show there, they do have a picture of uh, Tommy Boy at the Applied Scholastics uh, opening in, uh, I want to say this was in the early 2000s sometime. Right. Yeah. 2001. <laughs> that was a while ago. And then they have a, f a full spread. Uh, we just have the one page, but it's a full spread of the uh, the creepy photo that they have from the uh, complex down in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one That one actually spans the page. So there you go. Oh, yeah. You see Look the that. thing that I... This oh, is okay. the other half of that right there. Right. Exactly. Because I couldn't, I couldn't um, make a an image of the whole thing does it have a date small. on the on the magazine mike it it does clear it said and i can't well it says display, display. until 25 january 24. oh yeah okay so that's usually so it's means current. it's a it's a it's usually they have them for like a, a few weeks or a month so it's probably just come out and there you go yeah it's very recent someone um someone sent this to me and I can't remember who, but very kindly they sent it. And I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then I opened it up and I read the article and I went, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glowing review of Scientology that with, yeah, with and good we wanna, facts. Thank yeah, you, we want to support Geographic. National Geographic. And uh, if they're doing this, then we want to... Uh, want to buy some some of their mags and make sure that they know that this is a this is the correct direction with Scientology. Yep. Yes, exactly. And, and, and yeah, I was going to say don't d d lest anyone forget until uh going clear and Mike and Leah's show on A&E until those things started coming out, the media was very gun shy about uh 
about doing articles about Scientology because Scientology would come after them. And the fact that so many people are speaking out against Scientology on different platforms and on social media and in the just a regular media now, that is giving sort of uh, – it's taking away that uh, folklore that Scientology will ruin you if you do an article on them because if you tell the truth about them, what are they going to do against you? Right. And um, that's empowering these uh, these different media organizations to start covering it accurately. Yep. Yep. I also um, wanted to sort of uh, pile on with a few other bits of news and information about the bad holiday season that Scientology is having. Um, we, there's quite a bit of it, obviously. We haven't done a live for a while, so there's been all sorts of things going on. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention is this, uh, this TikTok influencer named Jessica Palmadessa, who, um, has, yeah, there you go. She has been engaged in a campaign in Los Angeles of standing outside of the Hollywood test center and warning people about going inside and this has been going on for some time and she is i mean she has a million followers on TikTok, and has been doing these videos about scientology now for some weeks or months i'm not even sure how long um claire and i got an alert from one of our friends uh in fact spanky taylor saying hey you should see this girl on youtube i mean on TikTok." And so I looked her up. I was like, wow. Uh, she does amazing work. She, she really does, does. She does amazing work and has now created a little um, fan club following of people that go to watch what's happening outside the test center on Hollywood Boulevard and to let them know that they are being tricked into going into take a test. And this yeah. is what's going to happen to you. And I imagine that at this point, there probably isn't a single person going inside that test center to get a test. Um, I don't know that for a fact. I'm sure they're not there the entire day, but it certainly seems like those people are there every, every night at least or every evening. Right. And now they have started... Uh, announcing over they also went to the new year's event and they were outside the new year's event and did a live stream outside the new year's event at the shrine auditorium and um they are now telling the sea org members inside the building and as they were getting off the bus at the new year's event that the aftermath foundation can help you escape and over, over their megaphones, giving the phone number for the Aftermath Foundation. Yes. So we really appreciate the shout out because that's what we want to do is get the message to Sea Org members because they're the ones that most need to know about the Aftermath Foundation. And Jessica and her gang of Mary Scientology watchers are doing a great job of making the presence and availability of help from the Aftermath Foundation known to those Sea Org members. Because yeah. everybody that's at the Hollywood Test Center is a part of the LA Org, and the LA Org is all Sea Org. Yeah. yeah. And it's worth noting, too, by the way, that the Foundation has received calls since this uh, from the Test Center. So now we've changed the response to, hello, you've reached the Aftermath Foundation. We help people leave Scientology. <laughs> Just to be very clear that they know exactly who they're calling. <laughs> yeah. And, and we do also know about uh, Streets LA and oh, these yeah. other guys. These guys are doing amazing work. And, and if you're doing um, a YouTube channel or a TikTok channel and you're doing this, we support you fully. It's amazing. Um, any, any way we can get the word out 
on any media about these guys is worth it. So absolutely. Um, thank you to all you guys. And we appreciate that you're mentioning the aftermath and you're giving the Sea Org members the number. Um, that is um, that is one way to get to those people that it's not that easy to get to Sea Org members and wherever they are out and about. Um, if somebody has that info and they accidentally run into one of these guys and they just tell them, hey, you know, you can call the Aftermath Foundation if you want to get out here. That's never been a thing for a Sea Org member. And right. Scientology is going to have to keep the Sea Org members inside as much as possible because if they know there's a way for them to get out and somebody to help them, um, the chances of them doing that are much, much greater because that's yep. that's I would say that's the biggest barrier to leaving the sea organization is not knowing how you're going to land when you get out or having yep. a support group or and that's the entire reason the Aftermath Foundation was formed. And as an aside, we have been getting a flood of donations and support and people emailing us and asking what they can do and volunteering, going to the Aftermath website. And in, in December alone, um, I don't know if it's doubled or tripled the amount of people that are reaching out to us in terms of donations or emails or volunteers, but it's definitely um, way up over the over the uh, months before in uh, 2023. So yeah. it's amazing. We, we appreciate it. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, which which actually segues into the next topic that I had on my little list, which was the New Year's event. I mean, <laughs> the New Year's event, um, much to David Miscavige's horror, I am sure, uh, some some sneaky person went in and recorded the entire event, and then it was transcribed. And put on, uh, Alex actually had the audio on his blog, and Tony Ortega put the um, transcript, transcript on his. Um, and now uh, Stephanie Hutchison, our friend at the uh, con uh, Shatter and Confront and Shatter <laughs> blog, has started to systematically go through the event itself and fact check everything mm -hmm. and of course it, it i mean she got just through the able and wise sections and the number of <laughs> falsehoods that are documented just in those in the first few minutes of this event are absolutely incredible and yeah. you should go to her blog and read what her you know analysis and fact checking is uh, and I'll have a link in the in the um, information section also I will put all of this on my blog with a post that matches this video so everything is available you can see the whole article easily and these links to like Jessica's TikTok and and uh, etc but I, I got to say, I haven't even finished reading that transcript yet. But the first thing that was so bizarre to me, apart from, and I think a number of people commented that they must have used, you know, chat GPT and said, write it. Here's some facts or here's some information. Write a speech in the style of Dan Sherman. Oh, <laughs> I was just going to ask that. I, I was going to ask your opinion, Mike, on who you think oh. replaced Dan Sherman. Chat GPT. I, I, I bet that they mm -hmm. have fed a whole bunch of previous Miscavige speeches in and said, now make a speech that's like this. The moreovers and the what a, what's a, and and give them this said, and, unprecedented. And, uh, <laughs> it's just like it's like reading Dan Sherman. Wow. But he starts out with <laughs> the able sector. And the ABLE sector, as Mark, who was formerly an employee of the ABLE sector, in yes. fact, came into the Sea Org as an ABLE sector person, yep. is the <laughs> secular version of Scientology. So it has taken the drug rehab, purif, and turned it into a secular program, taken study tech, turned it into a secular program, taken uh whatever and turn it into a criminal reform program 
yeah. and the way to happiness. Yep. Now, the way to happiness is supposed to be a non-religious moral code. That's what they claim it is. Yep. And that it doesn't have anything to do with Scientology. Hubbard's name is by his order in tiniest, the tiniest print, so that there is no correlation or identification between the way to happiness and Scientology, the religion. Right. And the story that Miscavige tells about the accomplishment of Abel, the really the only story he tells is about how the Portland org distributed way to happiness booklets into households in Portland that stopped the riots. And that was wow. entirely and utterly <clears throat> a church of Scientology activity. It had yeah. nothing to do with Abel. <laughs> nothing at all. It's funny. Scientology does this all the time. They say we are for public benefit. We are for public benefit. Look what we do with Narconon and look what we do with Applied Scholastics and Way to Happiness and Criminon. And then as soon as you flip it around and you say, yeah, you guys are using those as front groups. And they say, no, 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 no. The Way to Happiness and Criminon and Applied Scholastics, that, that, Narc that has nothing to do with us. So when it when it's good for them, they it's Scientology. When it's not good for them, it has nothing yeah. to do with Scientology. Right. Yeah. And so this is this constant yin-yang of lies that they end up getting involved in. And they've been doing it for so long that they just switch to either one whenever they like. And it's really, I mean, we should pull out the event where they say, that the peace in um, between um, Israel and all that, that they passed out way, they've passed out more way to happiness books in that region than anywhere else. <laughs> and every time they do that, they claim that they're the reason why there's no war and there's no uh, conflict there anymore is because yeah, we passed out way to happiness books to these people. <laughs> yeah, what about the Berlin Wall? It's been going on for a while. <laughs> yep, that's true. When they passed out, they, they, every time there's one of these things, they're like, yep, see, way to happiness book. What does L. Ron Hubbard say? What's the quote, Mike? It's about the, the calming oil on a on, on a the sea. Violent sea or something. <laughs> oh my I mean, gosh. Stephanie this book goes, says to brush your teeth. That's what this book says, okay? <laughs> yeah. Brush your teeth, be good to your parents. Take care uh, of yourself. Don't, yeah, don't be promiscuous. Don't sleep around. That's what this book says. Okay. Uh, yeah, don't, well, Steph do not steal. <laughs> You got to read the article from Stephanie because she says, well, Miscavige says that and uh, after we distributed uh, to every household in Portland 44,000 copies and then she and then she has the statistics there are actually 283,000 households in Portland <laughs> that the well, you know within one week the riots stopped and Stephanie is like uh, actually what happened was the National Guard arrived on that date and that was when the riots stopped it was when the national guard arrived yep. and it, it she just goes through all of these things as she does with everything she's such she's so so meticulous at documenting these things and then but then the next part is a what and i did read i got this far through the wise story the accomplishments of wise it's two brothers who have a building uh, home construction company, and they use LRH Tech. And as a result of this, and Stephanie's so funny, she says, this is like a, a David Miscavige infomercial for these guys in their building company. Yeah. Because that, all it talks about is they they install three miles of wire a week and it's like it's made it to sound like ideologues wow. they have they have <laughs> done <That's> 947 thousand <laughs> square feet of new affordable housing blah blah, blah 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 and it gets to the end and it says so this is l run hubbard's technology making dream the dream of owning your home a reality for all Australians. I mean, it's, it's oh, just... Oh, boy. You know, I just have to say one thing, Mike. You and I and Matt 
installed 10 miles of cable in three days. So <laughs> like whoop de doo and we, and we were loafing through it. We weren't like going nutso on it. We were just doing a normal day's work. Okay. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's so incredible to look back and I mean, it's gotten way worse than it used to be. There used to be some correlation between what was presented and the reality in most instances. There was sort of something, it got fudged, it got worded in a way that made it sound a little better than it really was. But there was some semblance of, of there was a kernel of truth. There was a, there kernel. Was a kernel of truth. <laughs> kernel of truth. <laughs> now you couldn't find a, the kernel on a pinhead. It's yeah. like there is nothing. They've got some guys that use LRH tech in their business, and so suddenly this is now providing affordable housing to the entire country, and thanks to L. Ron Hubbard technology. Yeah. And. I'm sure I haven't even read the rest of it. I'm sure when Stephanie gets through with it, it's going to be uh, complete Swiss cheese. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that um, if for those of you who don't know, I worked on these events for many, many years, all the entire production of the event and then the post production of the event. And David Miscavige would lose his mind if one single video of the event got out before he had a chance to go through the entire edit and take out anything or re-record VOs, part of his speech, if he messed something up, or yep. if somebody said, hey, that never happened, they might cut a section out or, or any of that. Mm -hmm. So the fact that somebody recorded it, gave it to Alex, Alex released it and Tony released it, and now Stephanie is going through and analyzing it. I always said, because we had a lot of event videos from past events that Stephanie had gone through and analyzed and started contacting these people in different videos and stuff like that. And I always said, if she could do a current event, that would really show how, how they're doing it these days. So the fact that the, the Scientologists that were at that event are likely the only ones who've seen this event. And oh, yeah. it, it takes weeks for them to, to package and make a perfect, perfect video that they then send out on DVD or they send it as a digital. I don't know how they're doing it these days. They used to send them out on DVDs. They used to send them out on VHS. Then they send them out on DVDs. But the fact that the internet gets to see the event and hear the event before the Scientologists, that is a major coup for Alex. That is a major <laughs> is. coup for Alex. It is. The fact that he could pull that off um, that alone is, um, is Dave, little Davey is his, his britches might be, uh, soiled at this point. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of little Davey, if you that, guys haven't, that Alex is a troublemaker. I gotta if you say. haven't gotten your Davey doll, your fake Navy Davey doll, you can still get those, uh, at the, uh, spshop.com. But, um, yeah, no, it's amazing that he did that. And before I forget that, um, National Geographic article, article at the very bottom of the page, it says, reissue of a National Geographic favorite. And this mm -hmm. article came out in October of 2017 and they're reissuing it. And that's why I might it that's why we thought maybe it might be a special edition because it's not coming up anywhere. It's a reissue of an article that they did that we I just we never just saw we never saw it. No, oh, but I never um, saw it. And yeah, so. and it's not entirely a reissue because it is new text for sure in there. Uh, David Miscavige had not been escaping service of a federal lawsuit. And in 2017, there hadn't been much of the aftermath yeah. show either. So yeah. I don't know what it was in 2017, but this is definitely at least updated to the very latest information. I think sure, National yeah, Geographic knows too. what's going to sell magazines. And um, and just like the tabloids, there are a lot of weird articles about Scientology in the tabloids. But Scientology sells magazines. So if you're in the tabloid business, that's why Scientologists are on the cover a lot of the year in these articles. And sometimes, <clears throat> I mean, I took a picture at the store. I don't remember when it was. Maybe it was like six months ago in the middle of the Danny Masterson thing. And they were on they were on a whole bunch of mags. They were yep. they were really cleaning up at the uh, supermarket on uh, yep. Scientology. Yep. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the New Year's event, uh, just 
uh, because I put a um, an article on my blog recently about the grand opening of the Paris Ideolog, um, and then uh, that that also came from uh, a terrific article that Alex published on his Scientology business uh, blog written by Stephanie about the history of Scientology in France and the uh, Hubbard's conviction of fraud. And it, there's a whole, it, it's a very, it's a great article with a lot of great information, but they had sent out these pictures of what the new uh, ideal org building looks like. And it is very flash and really kind of cool. Uh, but they also mentioned in their promo piece that uh, confirming that they have now collapsed CC Paris and the Paris Org into this one building. So effectively, they have committed an act of treason, according to L. Ron Hubbard, by combining two orgs into one. And though this will be promoted as the great expansion of Scientology in France, what they've actually done is contracted and mm -hmm. by 50%. Half they've halved themselves with this new building. Um, I suspect that this one will, in fact, open. Unlike Chicago, that was announced last year, and Austin, that was announced last year, they're going to open in the first quarter, and they're still not open. I'm pretty sure this one will open because it is very near to the Olympic Stadium, and the Summer Olympics are in Paris this year. Mm. So they want to use this as an opportunity to fundraise. We've got to distribute the way to happiness <laughs> books, booklets at the, the Stade de Paris or Stade de France or whatever it's called. And we want, you know, we have to get Scientology and get all these people coming in. Uh, so that ideal org I predict will open, but I also predict that David Miscavige will not be there for the opening. Mm -hmm. it, it this France and Germany and Switzerland and maybe a couple of other countries he will never travel to. He did not go to the grand opening of the Ideal Org in Berlin or Hamburg or Frankfurt or wherever they've been in Germany. He will not go to this one in France. He fears the French government that they may uh, take the opportunity to put him in handcuffs and same for Germany, <laughs> carry out. Yeah. Carry on the prosecution uh, that they had of L Ron Hubbard for fraud. And yeah. also, as a matter of fact, the former head of CC Paris, Alan, Fra Alan Frank Rosenberg and a few other people. I mean, the French have definitely taken their toll on Scientology officials over the years. And for that reason, I am certain he will not show up. So yeah, just he's a, not a big fan of the Interpol countries. <laughs> no. <laughs> and also the, um, I was going to say when we went and did that, um, we did a talk, uh, several, uh, ex Scientologists, we went and did a talk to Germany Right. Um, about Scientology many, many years ago. 2008. When, yeah, 2008. Uh, myself, Amy Scobie, um, a, a whole bunch of us, uh, Hannah Whitfield, Jerry Whitfield, uh, Jesse Prince was there. A whole bunch of us went. And when we Marty. were speak, Marty went on one of the occasions. We went on Mosey. two different occasions. But yeah, Marty and Mosey. I think, I think it's on YouTube as well. We should, uh, I can, I'll find the link if I, if it's still there. Yeah. Oh, we Jason can, Begay. We can include it. Yeah. Jason, went with me yep. the first time. But when we went there, we not only spoke to the German government, but we spoke to several, like the FBI or the police or the government um, police organizations for many, many countries. Mm -hmm. And the France guys, the, their angle was uh, or, or many of these different guys was like on the Purif because they were doing something that is really <clears throat> something that should be supervised medically, right. and yes. that was a big thing. And um, they can't, uh, they really can't administer 
the purification rundown in a lot of these European countries because they're giving medical advice and they're telling you what supplements to take and all that. But the other thing that they were very keen on was identity. The, the, the amount of personal information that Scientology is capturing from individuals and then keeping in their files for all of time, a very sensitive personal information. And um, I really um, think that, that those two things, the kind of uh, masquerading as medical people and the identity uh, laws are really going to kill them in Europe because they do not allow you to keep that stuff for any amount of time once you've gotten it from a person. Right. And, and Mark, I actually had that also on my list because I, uh, Leah and I did an interview with Peter Bonyai, um, who is uh, a wonderful activist in Hungary, Hungary, yeah. who I have known for some time, and he has been working very, very diligently with the authorities in Hungary, and this uh, ultimately resulted in um, charges being brought against uh, 11 Scientologists for tax evasion in Budapest and a $1.7 million fine. But pre prior to that, uh, they were charged with violations of the uh, personal data protection laws in Hungary and were convicted and found guilty. And I talked at some length to Peter and put a blog on my, uh, on my blog, a post on my blog that said, look, um, given the laws that as they exist with respect to data protection in Europe, which are incredibly stringent, mm -hmm. and any Scientologist or former Scientologist can write to the organization and demand that they destroy all their files, PC folders, ethics folders, central files, personnel files, anything and everything, including their address in in the addresso and that if they don't do so and you have demanded that and you get another piece of promotion from them even that is a criminal offense in most of the european countries yeah. and then alex reached out to me and said you know we have the same laws here in in the uk so i alex and i are trying to schedule doing a talk about the data protection laws in the UK, because this is something that every single former Scientologist can do. You can get them to destroy your files, or if they fail to do so, get them prosecuted for failing to do so. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it's easy in Europe. It is, it is not like the United States. And it, it's sort of uh, a message that I really, really want to keep reiterating and getting out to as many people as possible, which was one of the reasons why I wanted to do this at this time so people in Europe would be perhaps be able to tune in to hear that you can do something as an individual. Yeah. You can write and demand that your files be destroyed by Scientology. And if they don't respond or they respond negatively or you get another piece of promotion from them after sending that in, you take it to the data protection agency in your country and they are bound to take action. And you know what? Scientology, they have no good system for doing this because... Once you're on one of their lists, they share those lists with all other Scientology I organizations. Know. So if you put, you, if you send them a deletion request and you get another piece of promotion from another Scientology organization, then they're they're on the hook. They can't get around that. So and they they're one of their main statistics is bulk mail out. It's called BMO. Anyone who's been in the Sea Org knows about BMO, bulk mail out. They tried to send out, depending on the size of the organization, they want to send out several hundred thousand pieces of mail a month to, to, to the members that are in their files. So the chances of you requesting a deletion and getting another piece of promotion from them is very high. So right. yeah. anybody who's a former member um, you can actually even try this in the United States. At least you can say, hey, I sent these guys this and they keep harassing me with mail. That's another thing. If you send somebody something saying, I don't want to be harassed by you through the mail and they keep doing it, you can say, hey, these guys will not stop sending me stuff. 
in Europe, it's illegal for them to do it after you mm -hmm. do this deletion request. So right. I think this will be all of these things. They all add up. They all add up. Yeah, we heard from somebody recently that's under the radar and they had counted up the number of pieces of mail that they received from Scientology in one month. And it was 46 pieces of mail. <laughs> it's just insane. <laughs> it is insane. It's mm -hmm. absolutely insane. Well, that's what Mark said. The policy by L. Ron Hubbard is the size, not the quality of an org's mailing list and the number of mailings to it is what determines the gross income of the organization. That's right. And they also have another policy, which is outflow equals inflow. So no, outflow is holier and more remunerative than inflow. <laughs> yes. So Scientology <laughs> are trying to send stuff. It, it, it's written into their DNA that they have to send as much mail out as possible. And the thing like Claire was saying with the 47 pieces, that's because um, they have an, an organization called AOLA, Advanced Organization of Los Angeles. Well, AOLA sends their uh, shares and actually, in some cases, sells their mailing list to other Scientology organizations. I know because when I was at ABLE, I used to buy the AO mailing list and send promo to it promotional materials from ABLE. So that's how you get this 47 different pieces. They might not all be from the same Scientology organization. It could be from Celebrity Center, could be from the Advanced Org, could be from ASHO or Los Angeles, or it could be from all these different organizations. So that's why I'm saying they don't, they have a good way of sharing the names. They don't have a good way of getting rid of the names. Oh, because that's the other thing. It's illegal per their policies, L. Ron Hubbard said, you cannot delete a name out of the files. That's that, right? There's a policy that says that, Mike. Oh yeah. You can the, the, dead file it and say, don't yeah. send mail to it, but you right. cannot delete the information. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and, you know, of course the same thing goes for, um, preclear folders. The Hubbard policy is, uh, HCOBs, uh, like it is a suppressive act, a high crime, a treason to destroy even a page in a preclear folder, right. let alone the entire thing. You are not allowed to delete them. Yeah, which even is, if someone asks, that's why you're not I mean, allowed to delete them. And which which has backfired on them horribly because when 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 legal suits are filed against them and they say, "Hey, I want my folders," they can't say we lost it or we don't have it or it was destroyed, <laughs> because their own policy circumvents it ever being lost or destroyed. Right, yeah. but though but, though that doesn't preclude them from. Um, razoring out mentions of Hubbard and David Miscavige in the PC folder worksheets before yeah, they, sending them anywhere. They, they do redact the <laughs> hell out of them, that's for sure. Like literally <laughs> cut them out, not even redact, like well, razor there was, them out. <laughs> there was projects for years in Los Angeles yeah. where Sea Org members were going through files, ethics folders and PC folder, pre-clear folders and all the files that Scientology keeps with exacto blades and cutting out names of right. Hubbard or a Guardian's office member or any of that stuff. So we I always like to remind people of this. Scientology perpetrated the largest infiltration into the United States government in its history. And yep. 11, is it 11 or 12, Mike? 11. 11 or 12, 11 Scientology officials went to prison for that, including Mary Sue Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard's wife. So yep. Scientology has been playing this spy versus spy stuff for going on 70 years now. So they are, they're doing dastardly stuff. It's just now kind of <clears throat> leaking into the, uh, into the, uh, into the real world. Right. Yep. And something that I also wanted to mention when we were talking to Peter Banyai, um, this, data protection prosecution happened some years ago and they got fined and convicted and told, you know, these horrible statements about what they were doing. And I said to Peter, you know, they haven't changed anything, right? You know, the data protection people could go back to them and the same stuff will be going on again. If they want another easy prosecution, they're sitting there waiting. <laughs> they haven't changed anything. Absolutely 
for guaranteed 100%. Yep. Yep. They're incapable of change, as right. we say over and over again. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it really, they, they are in a, uh, they're in this weird position where people are telling them this is the law of the world. And then they're having to reconcile that with these are the laws of Scientology. And L. Ron Hubbard said, we can't do that. So if we follow the law, then we're going to be bad Scientologists. So that's the sort of, um, that's the situation Scientology's in right now. Well, he actually Hubbard said that that the WOG laws should be brought into compliance with Scientology policy. Yeah, right. that is and the he, role yeah. of the Office of Special Affairs is to bring the governments of Earth into complete compliance with the activities and policies of Scientology. He even says in one of those things, it might be the same policy where he says, w one day we'll be running everything and th this will go very smoothly when we're the ones God in charge. God forbid. Holy yeah. moly. Doesn't look like it's going that way, Ronnie boy. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, that's, that's why he's... he's uh, not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he GTFO'd back in 86, and he ain't been seen since. He's okay, like, guys. I can't come back. They'll arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's still on it, the run. <laughs> it's funny that someone put a comment in there I happened to notice saying, hey, is the Able Sector anywhere near Target 2? <laughs> I was going to say, it's not near Target 2, but it is near Target. There is a target down the street from it, but that's all. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay, the final little thing on my uh, list of stuff that I wanted to make mention of, again, is the great work of apostate Alex. Alex Barnes Ross has been doing a remarkable job of digging up the real truth about the safe pointing that Scientology has been engaged in in East Grinstead. And he is um, a one-man wrecking crew right now who is, who is uh, managing to get the most kind of remarkable admissions out of these people about what they're doing and what they're engaged in and copies of the emails that the, the, the county... Count or the East Grinstead counselors are sending to one another and all sorts of stuff. And it is quite mind boggling. But, but I want to make um, a more important point, I think, which is that though Alex is a former Scientologist, a former staff member of London Org, there are other people like Stephanie Hutchison who is not, who are not. And individuals can really make a difference they can accomplish a great deal in this field of cleaning up the abuses of scientology by taking action not just sitting around and and hoping that someone else is going to do it but stepping up and doing it themselves and you know, Alex and, and Stephanie, and there are obviously are many, many other people out there who are doing things, but those two happen to be bringing things to my attention constantly, and I feel like it's really important to acknowledge and recognize and thank them for what they do and hold them up as examples of what anybody can do, which is why I was sort of pushing this thing about the data protection laws in Europe. Anybody can do that who is a former Scientologist that happens to be in Europe or in the United Kingdom. So, you know, thank you for the, the work that you are doing, Alex. Thank you for the work that you are doing, Stephanie. Thank you to all the people who are out there participating and helping and sort of chiming in on this effort to end these abuses because that's what we're really here for that's yeah. all we're here for yeah yep. absolutely uh, absolutely do we want to put up some of the um the comments yeah sure here? yeah yeah we're gonna um, absolutely. I'll, I'll read the comments there you go we'll ba Perfect. balance it that way all right all right laurie plays scientology audit on youtube as well yes, yes. Yeah, that's Very another great one we're talking about yep <clears throat> 
Sam Slade, thank you for the super chat. Mike, can you tell us about how the church efforts in Taiwan came to be? They seem to be the most successful, quote unquote, in Asia. That's a great question, Sam. They are the most successful in Asia. In fact, I think that they're the most successful in the world. Scientology has grown in Taiwan. Unlike every other country on earth, it has grown. I think it's stagnant. The growth has stagnated now, but it certainly, um, you know, when you go to the advanced org in Sydney, the majority of people in that advanced org are from Taiwan, not from Australia, not from New Zealand, not from Japan, but from Taiwan. And I believe that the reason for this is because of one individual. There was a guy who was um, a charismatic personality who basically started a mission in Taiwan and built it up. And, and Mark and I know him because we did a bunch of videos about him yep. back in the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, he just, he was a person who had the ability to get other people to do what he wanted. And he was a very nice guy. I, he, I mean, he was also very assertive and they're not, that's not sort of a thing in their culture to be that way. And so because he was that way, he was, he was convincing people to do things um, and, 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 and telling them how amazing it would be. And so that is one of the reasons he was so successful. But I want to say the other thing is, Tom Cruise also helps out in this um, arena. And then there's a huge factor. They don't have any ex-Scientologists in Taiwan because it's right. so new to that Dianetics and Scientology. And they and to be fair, they didn't really push Scientology at first. They um, pushed Dianetics. And once they kind of saturated with Dianetics, then they started leveling these guys up into Scientology. So um, once they started getting some ex the Scientologists there, then that's when, and you, and the, and this sort of content that we're putting out right here starts spreading around. Then they go, Oh, I get it. These guys, this is a con job and that sort of thing. But, um, Scientology, uh, relies on these foreign places where there's not content, bad content about Scientology. And they overwhelm that with all these, all this public relations nonsense that they want people to hear about there. Right. Good answer. Yep. All right, Jane, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for recognizing William and Jessica. They rock. Yes, yes. they do. <laughs> Apostate Alex, even better. It's out there before Scientology <laughs> have even had the chance to air it in the local orgs. David Miscavige must be pissed. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then some yeah. <laughs> Scientology Money Project. This was the New Year's Scientology event written post Danny Sherman. Where did David Miscavige get his su superlatives and bloviations from? <laughs> hey, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Jacob Harkey, thank you for the super chat. Mike, do you recognize the Scientologist who was on the sidewalk talking to protesters outside of the shrine? He can be seen on Laura FM's live stream from last weekend. Curious if you knew him from OSA. No, I didn't recognize that guy, Jacob. The old guy, you mean. Well, no, there was the older um, guy. Phil Anderson was pushing yeah. like a, a catering cart down the I street know. I, in the I, middle of Lara out there. I was like, this is the craziest thing ever. Your daughter's outside protesting and somehow nobody knows not to send you out down the street with a catering cart pushing yeah. down. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. It, what, that was totally bizarre. But that's that. I mean, the. You know, one hand, the one they, hand does not know what the other hand is knows doing. what the, it's just crazy. But no, <laughs> I didn't crazy. know that guy, the guy that you're talking about. Yeah, Linda P. Golan. Why does that book say brush your teeth when the leader had teeth like candy corn? <laughs> yeah, great His, question. Um, I, I, I think it was uh, a comedian. Um, I think it was Nikki Glazer made a joke about somebody's teeth, and she said that your teeth are like the Spice Girls. They're all do. <laughs> they're all different colors and doing their own thing. That's L. Ron Hubbard's teeth. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard approaches things as do as I say, not as I do. Yes. 
Cat Baloo, the way to happiness, leave Scientology. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the way to happiness is the way out of Scientology. AGT Mom, thank you for the super chat. Listen to New Year's Eve audio. Why does David Miscavige speak in such a strange sing-song way? Emphasis on the wrong parts of words make it almost impossible to follow. Um, because he thinks it sounds cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and the amount of times he yelled at Mike for not talking like that was about a thousand, maybe, maybe two thousand or five thousand or fifty thousand. Yeah. Like, Mark, like <laughs> if you didn't um, sort of follow in his footsteps as to your cadence and pronunciation and emphasis on the wrong syllables, you <laughs> he he would give you a whole ration of shit and. The only person who spoke in a similar way to him was Dan Sherman. Right. If you've ever tried to listen to Dan, one of Dan Sherman's speeches, oh my God, the run on sentences and the, like, he's running out of breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then starts all over again. Um, it's just weird. I, I, you know, it is really weird. Anybody, Anybody who's not a, a sheeple Scientologist that listens to him goes, what is wrong with this guy? Right. Yeah. What's wrong with him? There's something wrong. Like, nobody talks like this. But Scientologist thinks he's, you know, they believe he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Right. Yep. Jim Herman, question, is this the only tax-exempt organization that is included in National Geographic? It might be. It, <laughs> it's a great question. You think yeah, Skull I and Bones know. is nonprofit? <laughs> no. Oh, it could be educational. It could be a yeah. nonprofit educational We should look at that. That know. would be amazing to know. It that. may be. The only one subsidized by the United States government. That's what that's what we're talking about, really. Yeah, I don't the know. The taxpayers. Op Opus Day may be. I don't know. We should look. We'll we'll check it out. We'll get some research. Yeah, we will. Yep. I'll put Stephanie on the job. <laughs> Sean speaks on YouTube. Question: Did do Scientology test test people commitment? Was seeing Laura FM's dad a test for her dad? Why would he be moving dishes outside in front of Laura <laughs> at night? Seemed weird. Yes, seemed. It was very weird. Like, it was weird. Super weird. And if and... it was a test, he didn't pass it because he ended up talking to her, and then she came back and told me that I think she gave. Didn't he give her flowers or something? I don't remember, but I think he gave her some flowers. They might have been on the cart, and he just said, "Here, take these." And, but uh, yeah, craziness. Michelle Carpenter, Imminent Trouble Source. Thank you for the super chat, Michelle. Good to see you here. Thank you, three, for everything you do to help victims and expose the truth. Only thing that can combat information control is information accessibility. Exactly. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for everything you do, too, on the uh, Discord. And is it Discord? Yep. Yes. I think it's Discord. I can't remember all the Reddit, Discord, flippy dippy ding. <laughs> Local color. Quote, it's a ripoff. Does that translate? Unquote, Jason Begay in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Jason has some of the greatest uh, quotes. He does. Sure I remember, and clear. I might have to find the photos, but Jason and I, when we came out of the conference, um, Rick Mo uh, Ken Moxon or Rick Moxon or Ken Rick Moxon, whichever name you want to, he goes by. <laughs> um, he tried to, they tried to get in to the conference when we were doing this to the government. And um, the German government wouldn't let them in. And right when the conference started, they said, listen, we know that the Scientology people were trying to get in just now while we we're doing this. But when you're doing an information seminar on drug dealers, you don't invite the cartel into the meeting. And um, that was how the that's how it pretty much started. That's how the conference started. <laughs> and so when it was over, we went outside and we were talking with Ken and um and i have a bunch of photos of that i mean we were just having a conversation right outside the door but um, that was a very good trip i might um i gotta get jason on here somehow some way um but we'll do we might do that as a video to show uh, all the fun things that happen in germany nbc don't want him doing this show. i know they don't yeah. <laughs> that's probably why he won't come on <laughs> yeah the scientology money project scientology is a tax evading cult that has tax exemption strange but true <laughs> exactly yes that is right 
Uh, Susan B. At Mark, you and Jason's video was eye-opening, but I'm pretty sure it was in Germany. Was Jason the speaker? Yes. We, we both were. We both uh, did yeah. a speech on uh, Scientology and told what we knew. Um, Apostate Alex, it was. it's the same with data protection in the UK. I'm working on something in this area at the moment. Anyone in Europe who's been in Scientology in Europe, get in touch. I can help. Awesome. Right. Stephanie Hutchison. Hey. Hi, everyone. Popping in for a few <laughs> minutes just the just to see the Fab Three. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here. Thank you, Stephanie, for everything. Denver Stevo in the house. Question. Have oh. you all had a chance to check out the Christmas lights in your area? By the way, Osa smells like poo. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, Steve, we went last night out to look at all the lights in our neighborhood. And I... Um, this, I, I mean, I don't know if I should, if I'm, oh, whatever, I'll say it. Um, for Christmas this year, we have a special guest at the Headley house and that is Sergio Belinsky because he doesn't have anybody to celebrate Christmas with. He, we flew him out here to, um, where we live in Colorado and he's spending Christmas with, with us. And we went and looked at a really amazing light show that's very close to where we are. And um, it has Star Wars and it's all computer controlled and it was very amazing. So we had all kinds of fun looking at lights. Yes. Yeah, that place is amazing. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah, you, we've taken you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know this, you know the one. Yeah. Yep. Peggy Dooley, as a longtime listener, it is so nice to hear something positive here. Thank you. Thank you, you Peggy. Chuck Beatty, Beatty. Always excellent, relevant content and background, true explaining. Great work. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. Hey, man. Nice to see you. Japan of Green Gables. Question. I've been reading about the fallout over Operation Snow White here in Canada. Mike, <clears throat> did you know Brian Levman, the assistant guardian who led Scientology here? Why was he expelled from Scientology? Hey, buddy. Um, yes. I, I don't think I've ever met Brian Levman. I may have. Uh, I certainly met a bunch of the other Guardian's Office people that were prosecuted. The reason that he was expelled from the C of S was a, a PR show. It is the same reason that Jane Kemba was declared a suppressive person, uh, but then is now back at St. Hill on course. Um, it, it was done to, to demonstrate that these were black sheep who were acting um, out of uh, off policy and not in accordance with the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard and had gone rogue and they were so bad that we had to get rid of them all. And that was the line that was used about the um, Guardian's office in the United States too, in order to satisfy the IRS who were kind of a little troubled by the fact that the Guardian's Office of Scientology had infiltrated the IRS and various other U.S. government agencies of why would you qualify for tax-exempt status? Oh, well, of course, we got rid of all those people. The new breed came in and, well, we got rid of them all, except for a few, like the president of RTC. Mm -hmm. Or Warren Ken McShane, Moxon. Or yeah. Kendrick Moxon, the unindicted co-conspirator or the current head of OSA, Linda Hamill, or 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 the head of ABLE, Laurie Zern, or, or Rena Weinberg. Rena Weinberg, or or <laughs> many, many, many of them who were not, but that was the line that was presented. Yeah. yeah they just did and, a rebranding. Yeah. And by the way, as an example of history repeating itself, that's what they've been doing with the latest Chase Wave registrars. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the exact same um, approach. Got keep rid them, of them all, unless them they were making too much money. <laughs> yeah, keep put, put them on a low post doing menial labor until uh, any Everything danger, blows over. A, a statute of limitations has run out, and then kick them out because they're, you know, we're acting quote unquote on their own accord, which we all know is the biggest bunch of nonsense any, anyone ever heard. Apostate Alex, someone posted on Reddit the other day, they received a letter from an org addressed to the dead former homeowner who bought Dianetics 40 years ago. They're desperate and insane. Yeah, yep. I've been hearing a lot of that lately, too, of them calling people who like have literally not been in an org for 30 years, and they're just calling them off the hook. 
Okay, yep. this is another one from Alex. I could not resist putting it. Yeah, in. I know. Apostate <laughs> Alex, I'd just like to point out the East Grinstead counselor who has promoted Scientology the most over the years is called Dick Sweatman. I kid you not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh, unfortunate, that's, Dick. Yeah, that's there's some. Uh, there's, yeah, now, we're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna go into that a bit when Alex and I talk next because there's some there. There is some remarkable stuff that is going on there, and and Dickie Sweatman is really, really right in the middle of it all. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Apolli Apostate Alex knew what happened. Apostate Alex, no, he completely ignored Lara and just kept on walking. The flowers were sent by <coughs> an anonymous viewer who was watching the live stream. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't know that yeah. part. That's a bummer. That um, is our Scientology stories peeling the onion, stopping the Russia Ukraine war, airdrop the way to happiness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, if you guys didn't know this, there's a new function in, uh, on YouTube and StreamYard and X where if you're watching this on the X platform and you comment, it'll show up in our stream and we can put it up. And I just happened to get one right here. Yep. Oh, Leah Remini sending you Mike Claire. Uh, Mark Love, thank you for continuing to do the work. Oh my God. Oh, Lily. Wow. Thank you, Leah. We love you. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> thank you for just being a complete inspiration and Merry Christmas. And yes. thank, thank you for the book. <laughs> oh, I love Lily. She's amazing. Oh my gosh. What a warrior. Mrs. T Rush, Merry Christmas to you all. God bless you. Thank you, Mrs. T Rush. Uh, I Hernig. Oh, okay. Hi, guys. I'm going to Tokyo soon and plan to take my little Davy to visit the org. Any anecdotes from Scientology in Japan you could tell us? Oh, was that you know who we did the, the video on the, the winter video? Yeah, but that, that was CCHR Japan. Oh, but you know, you know who was sent to Japan for the ideal org to get the ideal org rolling? No, Genie. Genie. No. Don't you remember that? Jeannie Sonnenfeld was sent oh, Sonnenfeld, to be, yeah. or Jeannie Franks or whatever, the Jeannie ultimate Bogvad. Bogvad, <laughs> yeah. The, the I heard ultimate, she was recently declared a suppressive. Yeah, well, I'm sure because she basically was the start of the chase wave. Yeah, yeah. I mean, stat pusher from from the, the beginning of time <laughs> yes. Jeannie, Jeannie, just like just like bill and yens i used to work for her when i was a young kid i worked at los angeles day and she was the de the deputy executive director and yens bogvad was the executive director or the commanding yep. officer whatever they called it at the time so yeah she was uh definitely a couple sandwiches short of a picnic yep. okay Joshua Armenta also want to point out that the governors of both the states of Sonora and Mexico in Mexico are known Scientologists. Oh, wow. I did wow. not know that. I didn't either. I did wow. not know that either. What are their names, Joshua? Maybe we could publish them. Yeah. <laughs> we could do a whole video about that. Yeah. We'll get you somebody go. who speaks Spanish on too, hopefully, to talk about it. <laughs> All right, M. Pesh, Matt Pesh in the house. The first time Dan Sherman spoke at Flag, I thought it was some kind of a gag being played on the staff. <laughs> it was a test. It was a test, exactly. <laughs> See how many people can stay awake for yeah. you know, the amount of times we'd have to sit through events with no sleep was yeah. a real struggle on top of that. All right, Billy Bob, one, two, three. So glad you're back. Merry Christmas. Thank so you, Billy Bob. You, Billy Thank Bob. You. The best Billy Bob of all. Yes. <laughs> okay, let me see oh. here. I'm going to put up, don't worry, I'm going to put up okay, that one. Yeah, Chuck, yeah. Hey Take Mike. it easy. I'm saving that one for last. Chuck Beatty. Hey, Mike, <clears throat> have you had any contact with Ursula Caberta? She is a whole important fact in anti-Scientology history, her and the state of Hamburg. Yes. And yeah. Chuck, yes, I have. I have had actually many um, interactions with Ursula and spoken to her and emailed with her and... At one point, she was going to come on. Um, I can't remember if it was the podcast. She she did a video with Amy recently. Yeah, I, I know, yeah, I know, and, and with, I reached um, out, Mark and Janice too. Right, yeah. I reached yeah. out to her after the Amy one and said, "Okay, Ursula," because when I had reached out to her, she didn't want to do it. 
like with me and Leah, she was like, I'm, I'm retired now. I don't need this shit all back up in my business, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, you've done your, you've done your, your time. You don't need to, to do anything for anybody at this point, yeah. but now she is. So now that I'm sort of back in the swing of things, uh, we might do one with her. I want, I desperately want to talk to her because, yeah, like I do too in public, not, yeah, be because I, she and I were, were like, she was the nemesis of Osa for a long time. Yeah. And I was the sort of nemesis of Ursula on the other side of the equation for a long time. So it would just be, be very interesting and i i like her a lot we get along yeah. very very well at this point there's no animosity even given all the horrible things that were done to her and she's just a great person so yeah we'll do yeah. that sometime chuck thanks that's awesome yes one of dv survivor johnny depp's randos hi serge glad you had a blast visiting claire mark and their boys we need to see some of your paintings and drawings serge so glad you graduated and the aftermath foundation helped you yes absolutely yeah. we went to a christmas party last night with serge and he was the star of the party it was <laughs> yes, amazing he's <laughs> he telling all kinds of stories <laughs> Rod Menely, thank you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Rod. We you. appreciate you. Merry Christmas. Uh, the Rafa Daffa Do drove by the Houston mission today, fourth largest city in the nation. No org, just a dead mission. The hookah bar next door was booming. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> hookah. 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 Okay. Hookah. Hookah. I don't want the YouTube algorithm to uh, confuse the uh, R. Uh, oh, okay. All right. But um, okay, now this one I want to I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to and Dr. X. <gasps> Dr. X. Dr. X just landed. <laughs> Glad you guys keeping me sane. Ten simultaneous flights landed. Wow. When you hit the NG, you know. Global optics are bad and around New Year's Eve event, big flap. Have a happy holiday, New Year to all folks watching, listening, love to all. Amazing. And on that note, yep. I've got to show you, um, we got one of these too, but uh, Grayson built them and I don't, and he's out playing with his friends somewhere at another friend's house. So I don't know where <laughs> they are, but uh, Mike sent this to me to show you guys. Okay. This is. Dr. X sent this as a Christmas gift, along with a whole swag of other things like her, her, Mike her and I mentioned generosity on, is overwhelming. Mike really and I is. mentioned on the live stream, I don't know, months ago that we were Collingwood fans and, right. um, that's a, a, a team in Australia and, um, and they won, uh, a huge thing over there and she sent us. I don't know that there's any merchandise that they make <laughs> that we don't have now. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, including it's a lot. signed signed uh, guns, jerseys, jerseys that, that that have all the team players on them and everything. And isn't that this... isn't that right behind you in your background? Oh, uh, that's the cricket one. Yeah, that's a oh, that's Australian oh, national oh, cricket wow, okay. team that she said. <laughs> no, I don't even have the Collingwood ones in here. Like, but these these little things are, um, like Legos. Made, they are Legos. <laughs> yeah, they're not yes. like Legos. They well, are they're Legos. Legos <laughs> made custom made from to a the, photo to like yeah. that Doctor X got took from one of the Emmy Awards. Christy and me, you can see me in a tuxedo and Christy in her red lacy floral dress. And they came and Jack spent, I don't know, two hours. Put, this is not just like five little pieces. No. There's no, like it's... hundreds of pieces in these things. And they go together in this little stand. And I don't know, it's one of the most sort of touching things that anybody has ever sent me frankly and from someone that that we have never met in person we don't know who just watches our videos and is so kind and so considerate it's it's really really something 
Yeah, so, Dr. X also sent a care package for Surge mm -hmm. with a hat and stocking and all kinds of stuff. So it's under the tree for, for Surge to open on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah. That's so amazing. thank you very amazing. much, Dr. X. Yes, we really appreciate really. it. And the thing and the thing that you sent for Surge was very, very generous and very kind. And um we will take some pictures when he opens it and we'll make sure you see those because he is gonna I'm pretty sure Serge is going to have the best Christmas he's ever had his entire life this year. Yes. So, um, <laughs> anyway, yeah. Okay, right. let's end on that before I start is that crying. is that yeah exactly is that that's the end of the the stuff right? Yes, that was yeah. the last one. I saved that one for last. Okay, it was well so we, amazing. we we've been going for an hour and twenty minutes, so that's yeah. pretty good. Well, let let me let me just finish with one yes. thing. This year we launched a new program through the Aftermath Foundation called Aftermath Connect. Um, so if you go to the Aftermath Foundation website, there's a, a tab called Missing Persons. And so given that it's the holidays and this is the time of year when we feel the impact of disconnection the most, I just wanted to say you can go on there if you've lost loved ones to Scientology as we have, you can create a post there. I put one up from my mother. And the, the whole idea is to expose the destructive and evil practice of disconnection and bring about reconnection. Yeah. Perfect, Claire. And awesome. let me just say to everybody who has been supportive of us and supportive of the Aftermath Foundation and supportive of any effort to, to put an end to the abuses of Scientology, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season, uh, whether it's Merry Christmas or whatever it is that you celebrate. Celebrate in style, enjoy yourself, have fun with your friends and family. I know we will. Uh, we are planning on having uh, a great time between now and New Year's, and uh, I hope everybody out there does too. Yes. Happy yes. holidays, Merry Christmas, we love you. Merry all Christmas. that good stuff. Happy, happy New Year. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. You can find more episodes of Exposing Scientology, both on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my best-selling memoir, A Billion Years, My Escape from a Life in the Highest Ranks of Scientology. It's available on Amazon and as an audiobook. Until next.